Hello, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, we will learn about shear flow and we'll do that uh, through an example we already kind of solved before in uh, the previous lecture or lesson on shear stresses. Uh, so from uh, that previous lesson we've seen that uh, that beam and this, this is the T cross section for it and the beam was under a maximum shear force uh, 5 kips and we analyzed the shear stress between the flange and the web and to do that we had to calculate the Q value so I call here QF <coughs> it's 5 inch to the power 3 uh, part of the area properties given to us we know the uh, centroid location and the moment of inertia IX where the moment uh, is applied uh, and, and the uh, and the uh, IX here is also the axis X which is perpendicular to the direction uh, of the shear so if I draw the shear force that I have here 5 kips it will be going uh, like this uh, so uh, the flange and the web are connected together using a bunch of uh, 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 nails so these these nails here uh, that we have them over a distance of two inch on center OC so these nails are kind of put in place every two inches to connect and make sure that the flange and the web kind of um, act together and form that section that's not failing under the load so they, they bend together they deform together using these uh, nails without the nails the flange would slip uh, on, on the web and they will not be acting as a single whole uh, section so the idea now is we would like to also design for uh, the nails so we need to figure out how big nail the nails should be and to know that you have to figure out what's the shearing force that kind of try to make them fail so that that flange and the web kind of they they tend to slide and the nails kind of holding them so we want to see how much of that sliding shear is carried by each nail so we call here this is v nail uh, and we'll calculate v nail using a new kind of type kind of shear formula that we'll see here is called shear uh, flow and we represent it here as uh, q uh, force per unit uh, length of beam this is what we refer to here as shear flow uh, so we know from previous lessons that tau is equal to VQ variety. This is the shear stress. And we analyze uh, that previous example, the shear stress at the junction between the web, which the solid line here, and the flange, which is kind of I cut and remove the flange to reveal the shear stresses. And we know from before that shear stresses are tra transverse, which are in the plane of the cross-section, and longitudinal along the length uh, in the direction of the beam um, so the nails are here so these kind of tau are kind of trying to collectively kind of shear off uh, the nails and this is what we call collectively here kind of combining force together to form that V nail the shearing force in each nail so to analyze this V nail we will take out uh, a length of one unit length so it can be, if our example here is in inches, it can be one inch, it can be one foot. So it's just one unit of, of length. And the thickness that we have of the web that we are uh, or used to analyze the shear at, and you can see here every point of this length will have a tiny uh, force, what we call tau. So tau here is the stress. And uh, the shear flow that we just mentioned its name is now the resultant of tau over the area here that we're showing of, of a width of T and a length of 1. So the formula turns out to be Q now, which is uh, a force per unit length. So it's like a pound per foot. Would equal to tau, which is a pound per square foot or square inch times the T, which is a unit length, and 1, which is a unit length. So you will end up with a Q to be a force per unit length. Um, 
So if I plug in tau to be VEQ over IT, I will end up with Q lowercase, which is a shear flow, to be very similar to tau in terms of the formula, but now it's not affected and it's not dependent on the thickness of the slice, how much of the material you're slicing here, the thickness of the material you're slicing. So it's VQ over I, and that's it. So if we um, um, analyze the Q nail uh, or, or here, it's not V nail yet, so it's Q, which is just shear flow going at the location or uh, uh, through the, the nails. Uh, plug in the values we have, V max, uh, 5 kips, the Q of the area that's supported by the nails, which is the flange area. Uh, and the Q value here we calculated from a previous, the free previous lesson, and I is given to us. So we'll find that Q nail is equal to 1.376 kip per inch, because my units here are an inch, so my unit length of the beam is an inch, but then and I'm interested to bring it to a feet here, so that would be 16.52, so I multiply here by 12. Now we didn't get yet uh, V nail. So to get V nail, the shear force on each nail, uh, I, I can get it using Q nail in two different ways. So the first one is that Q nail happens uh, in, in a unit length, so in a foot. That's, that's kind of all, the total force, shearing force or shear flow in a unit length along the beam. Now, if I know that along every, uh, on this unit length, the number of nails that are responsible for holding it, you can say. Then I will divide Q nail over the number of nails per unit length. I will end up with the force in each nail. So that's one. Or I can, another way is multiply Q nail times the nail spacing. So the spacing between the nails. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and they both will give you the same answer. So let's prove that using the example here. So if the nails are at two inch on center, uh, the spacing here. So this means that in every foot uh, I have six nails. So I will divide the, the shear flow, 16.51 kip per foot, over six nails. So every nail will be responsible for carrying 2.75 uh, kips. The other way is multiply 16.51 kip per foot times the spacing, but now the spacing here, I know it's two inches, but I have to bring it to foot. So now, that, will, that means that uh, the, the same force we ended up with, V-nail here, similar to the first uh, approach we used. So either one is fine. Uh, if you're comfortable with understanding only one, that's fine. Uh, but the idea here, the process, is you look at the area or the part of the section that's supported by the nails or, or screws, calculate the Q for it, Plug it into the formula for Q lowercase, so you calculate Q uppercase, the first moment of area of that supported part of the beam. Uh, you plug it into the Q lowercase formula to figure out the shear flow going through or between that part and the rest of the beam. And then considering the spacings between the nails that you have control on defining them or they are input, you can find the force, the shearing force, on each nail. And then you can figure out now tau within the nail, not tau of the beam itself, but the within the nail, tau is equal to V over A, which is tau average in this case. So you can design and pick and size the nails that you are using to build up that uh, T section here. So that, that, that's it. We've seen uh, how to understand the concept of shear flow, and we have seen how to use it in uh, calculating shear forces in nails that are used to build up sections. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you later.